This is Randy Thompson coming to you live with Miss Trudy Adams and we're doing our warm-up canters. Our goal today is to for Trudy to keep her range short enough to where her hands are in front of the withers which keeps her seat in another place and if Annie, when Annie breaks she's going to use her leg. So this is, uh, we've done less than 10 lessons now where we've asked Annie to stay connected at the canter. So you're seeing a horse that's going from green horse canter to a more balanced connected canter. Good. Check your hand. Touch the mane. So I have them touch the rein so she makes sure she's not pulling on the rein, which is easy to do when you're on a greener horse. That's right. Touch the mane. Try your outside hand, then switch to your inside hand to make sure you're not holding. Good. Touch the mane. Adjust your seat. Keep touching the mane, adjust the seat, touch the mane, touch the mane, touch the mane, right there, touch the mane, touch the mane. I know it's hard because that's your body saying it wants to bring your hands up. Do you feel it? You're doing great. You're doing great. This is a big change. Shorten your rein. Put your hand down. Touch her. Good. So you've got to think every other stride, you're going to put your hand down. That's it. Now think half halt with your body. Half halt. Half halt. Easier said than done. Oop. New camera. Sorry. Let's see if I can find it. I've lost the horse and rider. There they are. That's right. Good, good. Check your hand. Good. Well, and that's, it is a tiring thing. So that was like a minute and 30 seconds. And this is good for everybody to see because they'll think they can get on a horse that's learning how to canter and connection and balance. And they think they can get on a canter for five minutes, right? It doesn't happen. As you found, you might go a minute, 30 seconds like now, or it might be three minutes, but five minutes, it's hard work, isn't it? It is hard work because she was really trying to be stubborn. She wasn't trying to be stubborn. This is new to her. Remember, less than 10 sessions that we've actually worked on the connected canter. So she's not being, that's, that's so good for you to say, it. she's not being stubborn. She just doesn't know what you want yet. So your goal is to think it's going to take a thousand attempts before she really understands it. In the meantime, it's a great time to practice your position. Check your hand. Check your seat. Keep her in front of your leg. Good. Check your hand. Touch her neck. Keep touching her neck because that's the easiest way to remind yourself. Touch her neck every time before when she falls in and out of gate. Touch her neck. Keep your seat up there. You're starting to lose your stirrup, so that means you need to realign yourself again. So if you feel yourself getting loose in the irons, like right there, you've got to adjust your position. Adjust your position. Your left iron is loose. So make sure your left iron is tight. So go back to the basics. Anchor yourself. Anchor yourself. You check it. Make sure you're anchored before you ask for the canter. So that's the most important thing you can do with her at this point, all right? First, your position has to be solid. Until it is, it's going to be hard for her to stay connected. Good. Much better with your left leg. Touch her mane. That's it. That's it. Oh, there goes your left foot. So what do you have to do? Check your position. And it's going to happen like you noticed every 10 steps. That's normal. So she's just touching the mane to make sure at the canter she's not unconsciously pulling on the reins like she's doing right there. She brings her hands back. That's where she's actually lost her position. And that's where we want to get. And everybody goes through this stage. I couldn't, can't hear you. What did you say? She throws my whole body out of That's it. right. And I'm trying to keep it, but... Well, it is hard. It's hard when she's doing all of this. That's stuff. right. That's right. And she's not trying to go above the bit. She's just trying to figure out what you want her to do. And in the process, you're exactly right. It's going to throw your riding position all over. So the most important thing for you to do is when you feel your feet slipping out, your left leg, that's when you've got to take the time to do a half halt to realign your position. Because until you're aligned, you're not going to be able to do anything, right? So this is perfect for you to feel because I know you'll focus on it now. Because how, how many steps do you find before you lose your leg? Yeah, well, it's about 10, which is normal. But you've also noticed that the more you lose your leg, then all of a sudden you lose your hand. That's right. That's right. And then she falls apart even more. It's nothing that you're doing wrong, Trudy. 
you're like her, you're learning a different way to stay connected with your riding position at the canter so that she can stay more balanced. And she does, she's staying pretty good on the right. Yes. So that's why a lot of times I'll just go to the right so she knows I'm happy, that's what I want. Then we go back to the left and it all falls apart. Well, it will at this time, but that's what happens to every rider. You know, the pros, they're adjusting their seat every other stride. Like uh, Klemka, who was a world dressage champion type of thing, he, he said that on world champion horses he was riding all the time, he was consciously adjusting his seat position every three steps. And most average riders are lucky if they think about their seat three times in a session. Very good.